Hello, this is Ford Brewer with uh, PrevMed, Heart Attack, Stroke, Cancer, Disability Prevention. We're trying to prevent all the bad stuff. Um, <clears throat> and for the most part, you can. Uh, most of us could extend our lives by a couple of decades, and I don't mean um, a disabled life, I mean a healthy life. Um, today we had a, I'm going to go over the pulse cardiac test, P-U-L-S. One of the readers asked me, I mean, one of the viewers asked me about that. They asked about P-U-L-C. I think, I'm pretty sure they mean P-U-L-S. It's an interesting test. Um, I think it will be better than the stress test. When I say I think it will be, I mean, that's a key phrase, and I'll explain what that means a little bit later. Let's go back through some basics. You know, most of us, when we hear about HDL and LDL, we know that HDL is the good cholesterol, LDL is the bad cholesterol. We don't really know that much about what makes it good or bad and what the issues are. It's helpful to know what makes it good or bad. H stands for high density, well, the, it stands for high density lipoprotein and low density lipoprotein. As you can see in this picture, this high density lipoprotein, these are the proteins here. Um, and the high density lipoproteins, the only difference between these two is that the, uh, the HDLs have more protein. That's what your body makes to transport uh, lipo, uh, lipids, which are fats and oils. So what actually happens is the HDLs are like an empty dump truck carrying stuff around. LDLs are like a full dump truck. They, can, they get stuck in the circulation. Another way to look at that would be, uh, instead of a dump truck, uh, guys with a, a wheelbarrow, and you see in this picture the HDL is taking the wheelbarrow, taking the lipids away from the artery, and the LDL is dumping the liquids here on the lining of the wall of the artery. Speaking of lining, that's where it's all happening. This is where the action is. This is a normal, uh, well, normal. It's a, it's a healthy artery with nothing in between, no plaque. You have two layers that we're mostly concerned about, the endothelial layer and the uh, media layer. The media layer is the, the muscle layer that provides the strength. The endothelial layer, or intima, provide, uh, is mostly metabolic. It keeps it from clotting and, and does some other things. Keeps it slick. So what happens is, if you've got too much of the right kind of LDL, and if you've got irritation or inflammation of that intima layer, you will get um, plaque deposition. That LDL will slip in between the intima layer and the media layer. This is a great example. This is, uh, actually came from the, ar the artery of someone who died from a heart attack. So, this is the intima layer. You can see it really well in this area right here. It's very thin. The media layer is out here, and everything in between is a waxy deposition of LDL. It's a waxy substance. Right here, it's not waxy. It's inflamed. Our immune system has attacked it, trying to get that stuff out of there. And as you can see, it's sort of pulled back from the surface. This is liquid. And the problem is, if that liquid breaks out, it forms a clot. It's the clot that gets you, not the plaque itself. Here's another picture of one of these. Again, <coughs> uh, intima layer. And in this intima layer, you see this one has cracks. Media layer is way out here, and the plaque is here. Here was, was an area of inflamed plaque liquid like you saw in that last picture. That liquid broke through cracks in the intima or uh, uh, endothelial layer. When it touched the blood, it did what I said a minute ago. It formed a clot. The major this is all clot here, by the way. It backed on up into the wall of the artery. The major portion of the clot went down and uh, to this person's heart. To arteries that were open prior to that clot hitting them and killed the patient from a heart attack. Now, <clears throat> why do I say that the pulse test is probably going to be better than the stress test? 
Well, again, what we're looking for when you when you go through that last uh, series of images we went through, you realize that what we don't want to know so much what can flow through right now. We want to know what's cooking in terms of inflamed plaque. Now, this is another version or image of inflamed plaque. You have actually dead uh, junk, what, what we call uh, inflamed plaque. You know, it's the soft stuff. That happens when the immune system, as I said a few minutes ago, sends cells in to try to dissolve this. So let me just orient you. This is the uh, blood, the lumen, where the blood flows. This is the intima layer, or the uh, endothelium. This is a plaque. And down here is the media. So one of the other things that you see here is that there are proteins, cells, uh, other things that are being generated by this immune system, this inflammation, this inflammatory process. These proteins and cells, uh, the more inflammation going on here, the more these markers and proteins are released. That is what the pulse test is all about. The pulse test stands for protein unstable lesion Signature. So what they're, and this is the press release from um, GD Biosciences. GD Biosciences uh, worked a, an exclusive deal with uh, Cleveland Heart Lab. Cleveland Heart Lab does do a lot of the uh, advanced testing in this uh, heart, cardiac risk area. And they're saying it's cutting edge. It's uh, going to be the best. Well, now, what are they? Well, here's the information from Cleveland as well. It gives you a little bit of information about this, basically saying, look, it's not enough to get uh, to look for risk factors. And it's not enough to look just at a stress test. And they're right. Um, I, think it, I think the statistic, is, and they quote it in here, is something like half of the people with serious heart attack have only one risk factor. So going back to the Framingham risk factors and depending on that, good luck. That's not going to get you there. So here's some more information from the pulse test. Um, let me orient you to this, to this picture. First of all, it cuts right down the middle here. It's hard to see on my poor graphics, but here, that's what the issue is. This is the bloodstream. And on this one, this is the bloodstream as well. This is a healthy side where you have intima, media, and basically red blood cells. This is the area where there's a plaque. And they're basically saying, look, we're looking for all of those little proteins and markers that come out of this inflamed plaque. And if you've got that going on, you're at much greater risk for heart, heart attack or stroke. Uh, again, all of that's real. So, <clears throat> why did I say in the beginning, probably, or I think it will be better? Here, here's the problem. Um, I haven't, I haven't seen any of the, I haven't seen any significant numbers. I can't find any significant numbers. Not aware of any significant numbers associated with the predictive value of this test. What they did, again, was get a lot of different markers and put them together and say, okay, we're going to get test for these markers and tell you whether or not they're in there. Uh, when you do this, you'll get your pulse profile, a, an estimate of your heart age, and then the lifestyle changes that you need to do. Uh, again, uh, sounds pretty simple. I, I think the the first one is sort of like a, a um, Framingham plus then the pul uh, the risk factors. They'll give you an estimate of your heart age and then lifestyle changes. That's what's going to happen is, as you know, you go through a full-blown <coughs> cardiovascular risk evaluation, a major portion of what you do. If you weigh 30 pounds too much is lifestyle. You're going to have to deal with the lifestyle issues. If you smoke, you need to stop smoking. There are medications that we can do and other things as well, but lifestyle is very important. 
So now, here's more information on the pulse, and I think this is where it becomes helpful to say, okay, well, what are they actually looking for? They look at hemoglobin A1C. Well, we all know that hemoglobin A1C, or elevated average glucose in the blood, is a huge risk factor. In fact, maybe three quarters of the risk factor. We may find later on, as we get more information around dental uh, inflammation, that that might even be bigger, but right now it Clearly, uh, glucose metabolism disorder is the major problem. They look at HDL, and yes, I mean, that's like the cholesterol tests. We know from looking at cholesterol tests that it does have some predictive value, but again, it doesn't predict the stability or the presence of plaque or the stability of plaque. I can tell you people with high HDLs can have a lot of other problems and a high HDL is, is saving many of my patients. But then they're looking at th other things. FAS ligand, human growth factor, uh, etac uh, eotaxin, uh, FAS, interleukin-16 or IL-16. So what, are all these, what, do you, what do all these mean? Well, when you look them up, um, this one is the academic article on uh, NFKB and FASL, and this was uh, the, let me see, the um, FAS. This one is related to FAS, and sure enough, it is a predictor of atherosclerosis and plaque stability. So, but how good is it? Uh, well... Again, another one looking at FAS uh, ligand specifically, and yes, it is one of those predictors, one of those proteins that's, or one of those um, chemicals that's put out by the inflamed plaque. So, <coughs> basically what they did was they got some, some uh, specific markers, looked at them, and said, we're going to put all those together and create a risk profile for you. If they had really good information regarding the, um, the predictive value of this conglomeration, this group of tests, I do think they'd make it a lot easier to find. And right now, I think it's gonna be a while. We need experience to see, see what it's gonna look like. Testing is a problem. Uh, I'll just end up with choosing wisely. The, uh, the Medscape uh, survey recently on physicians and malpractice said, you know what, choosing wisely causes a lot of malpractice. What the problem is, is this. Um, there's a lot of statements and focus that we over-test in medicine. A lot of concern that it's driven by uh, fear of malpractice. A lot of it's driven by patient knowledge that or patient desire to understand what their risk is. Um, when I was at Hopkins, a major portion of what we did was look at specific tests. Uh, and that requires a little bit of uh, epidemiology background, epidemiology training. I can tell you that testing does tend to be way overused. Um, I'm not using the pulse test at this point for the reasons that I mentioned. I don't know what I'm getting when I, uh, uh, when I get those numbers. Thank you. <clears throat>